Hey, what is up you guys? This is Eric with Ozone TCG. Today we're taking a look at some of the field centers we're going to be start making. This is kind of a basic process of how I'm making these field centers. Um, you guys won't see me on the screen this time, at least not on the camera, but I will be showing you exactly how I made a, a our test field center. Um, before we get into the video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, let's get on right into it. Alrighty, as you can see here, I have the piece of paper, just paper currently for this test one. I'm going to have actual cardstock, metal, plastic later on um, with all the designs that we have on here. But for this one, this is going to be for the team. So I was testing prints using my own printer, it's just a basic brother um, inkjet printer and came out pretty nicely considering. Um, but I'm currently looking around here and lining everything up with a Pokemon card and that is just to add a little bit of extra thickness and make sure that uh, the field centers are lined up properly. Um, now I'm going to use acrylic for these and once I start making these they are not going to be rounded of, you know, in any way. They're going to just be um, hard 45 or 90 degree corners depending on the type of field center. Um, but right now I'm just trying to line it up as best as I can with a Pokemon card in case I want to put it in a Pokemon card sleeve or top load or anything like that. The idea is to make sure that everything is lined up correctly and also to cut them in a way so that it doesn't put yourself at risk. Don't do what I do in this case where I'm cutting downwards. Make sure you're cutting away from yourself. That is the correct way to do it. I do not do it that way. Um, that is because I'm not good at it the other way. Um, but yeah, definitely stay safe when you guys are using this stuff. Otherwise, it'll look, uh, it'll be a little bit messy if you end up cutting yourself. I'm using a tiny X-Acto knife. Um, they're pretty cheap. I mean, I, I've been using this one for a few years now. You know, they're anywhere between five and ten dollars at your local craft store or retailer, and they come with a few extra blades. Um, the blades are incredibly sharp, of course, but these are Exacto, and it is one of the leading brands. Now, if you guys are going to be using this, make sure you be careful. Wear protective goggles. Um, you always wear eye protection in case anything goes wrong. Um, and make sure that you have some kind of gloves on. Again, don't say, do what I say and not as I do. Um, I'm not very good at, at using cutters or, or knives or anything with gloves on. That's why I elected not to do it this time, but please wear protective uh, clothing, anything, whenever you are doing these kind of crafts because you will put yourself at risk otherwise. And make sure not to cut towards yourself. Again, cut away from yourself or cut to your stronger side. Say, I'm right-handed. So I was cutting to the right of myself when I was doing it from the side. But the reason why I'm using this ruler, it has a cork bottom, a very thin cork slice on the bottom of it. So it made um, pressing down onto the mat a little bit easier. I should have also used a really hard surface like my desk. I should have put this on my desk next time. I'm gonna, once I start actually making these, I'm gonna put these on my desk instead because the floor is not a very hard surface. My wooden desk, fully wooden desk is though. Make sure you guys are doing that to make sure that everything is um, staying in place. The, the piece of paper put tape uh, on each edge of the corner, you know, on all the corners and you can do some of the edges as well, just to make sure the paper is not moving around when you're trying to cut them. Um, you definitely want to make sure that it's like that. And then you can see right here, a little bit of the bottom of there is you know kind of uh, peeling off just a tiny bit um, I'm also going to trim it up a little bit just the side just to make sure but yeah they'll be more rectangular rather than I tried to cut corners literally cut corners on these um, in that I, I didn't want to necessarily have everything on there but finished products will be a lot cleaner this is just to show you guys this was a really quick demonstration and with hand tools rather than more professional tools like a guillotine cutter um, or a straight line cutter anything like that and you can first all those your local craft stores if you guys are interested i can also provide some affiliate links for amazon later from some of the supplies that i've been using whenever i print these for actual sales material business material i always use a professional printing service either from some place like office max office depot staples or a local print shop i would always recommend to you know support your local print shop because not that they're a dying form of media at all but they do need the business um, it, they generate their business entirely from printing things, of course, but they really, really need, especially now with a lot of people not using 
um, as many in-person signs as more online now. Um, definitely go to your local print shop first and foremost. Um, they know what's best. They will know better than Staples and Office Max, for example. They are professionals. They are trained to do so. It is not difficult to be, you know, to, to do to do the work, but you have to know how to do. You have to have that experience. So yeah, definitely recommend uh, going to them if you guys are interested in doing this stuff. I can, I really wanted to show this as, an, as a uh, kind of a tutorial, a step-by-step -step guide on how I did everything. Um, but then after I finished the first part, I went on to the next part, which was just cutting some of the extra excess off. Again, I wasn't exactly sure going in how I wanted to do that because it was just my first test um, cut with everything, putting everything together. And the finished product, honestly, I'm a little surprised on how nice it looks. Um, it, is, it looks amateur right now, but once I get the process down, it's going to look even better. Um, I, I really am excited to show you guys exactly how many designs we have coming out eventually. Um, this one is going to be a field center for the team. You can see the QR code in here has the Ozone TCG logo and it has our link tree QR code with all our, you know, all our social media links that will be updated as things go on. YouTube channel, TCG player affiliate link, website link, Facebook, um, Twitch, Twitter, all of that will be on there so I can just show someone that they can take a picture or scan it with their phone and it'll take them right to Ozone TCG's everything. You know, that's where we want to have people go. And really the top three things, the TCG affiliate, YouTube channel, and website are the main three things I want people to, to really look at when they're looking at Ozone TCG because that's where we're going to have most of our content. Um, pretty much all our content is going to be through those three mediums um, and what we want to really push with the channel moving forward. Um, but here you can see again I'm cutting the words myself. Uh, not great to do again. Um, once I make these I will be ditching the Pokemon card entirely. Just want to again test it for this uh for this first kind of time cut um, going through here yeah and it looks pretty good i mean i'm really impressed with the way everything turned out i was actually using my exacto knife to cut through the uh, the holographic uh sticker on here um i put i use a holographic sticker that's how all the tokens are made uh you know any kind of modified rares anything like that um, if they want to make them larger, they will use some kind of holographic sticker. It is not expensive at all. It's very cheap to actually make all of this, but it, the end product is really nice for how, really how little effort you have to put in. Um, so I was, you know, matching up the edges and corners and everything. with the holographic sticker film, um, just to make sure it would fit properly on here. And then, you know, moving forward just a little bit more, I'm not gonna go through 100% detail on what, what I was doing, um, cause you guys can see it, but um, yeah, it looks really nice. I was trying to do, again, literally cutting corners to just see how it would look um, moving forward. That won't be the case. Okay, then after that, I kind of had a little bit of trouble with the actual sticker paper. wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to do it. Um, the fingerprints will show up if they, you know, if, they, if it catches on to you, you don't immediately try and move it. Um, not really noticeable once you put it on the piece of acrylic um, or plexiglass, anything like that. It's not as noticeable, really. Um, but I just still wouldn't. I would try to avoid it as much as you can um, using some kind of... Uh, you know, stick to, to move the transparency film around, anything like that. 
Um, yeah, and then I actually put it down. This again, this will be easier if you're using thicker paper um, because it'll just go right on there rather than being affected more by wind. Um, I had a fan on in the background and that was causing a, a lot of wind to move the paper around in that case. Um, but you can see it looks almost like a secret rare. Um, we're going to be looking and experimenting with a, a bunch of different kind of sticker transparency papers. Um, just to see what looks best. This one looks really nice. I think with kind of a diagonal line um, holographic uh, sticker sheet, anything like that, it will look a lot like a secret rare. And so at this point, I'm just trimming down and everything again with the sticker paper on. The easiest way technically to do this is to put the holographic sticker paper on first on top of the initial you know, nine printouts and then cut them from there. That is how I will be doing it moving forward. Again, just wanted to make a test print just to see if I could do it just on one because that is, of course, the most difficult thing to do. Um, really is to layer everything all at once um, and then cut through the, you know, the sticker layer and the paper or construction paper layer um, and then make slight dents, slight lines into your plexiglass, acrylic, anything like that. So you have it and then cut the acrylic after taking off the, the sticker paper and regular paper. Um, that is the easiest way and that is really the most efficient way. Uh, just because you get everything perfect all at once rather than having to do this all manually. Again, remember this is a test, so um, that's why I tried to do it the hard way. And then of course, the satisfying plexiglass uh, wrap being taken off. That is just the one side and then you can see that of course the ring right there but it is like it's not thick plexiglass but it is still durable and it, it really is kind of hard to move this but it is still cuttable by a, a slightly larger utility knife and you guys will see that. So I'm lining it up right now again not really using um, a ruler this time don't need to do it as much. You guys are going to see in a, in a minute the most dangerous thing I did here, and I definitely do not recommend um, when it comes up here, it was in cutting the some of the acrylic plexiglass. Um, I almost cut myself doing it. I had to keep it together right there um, <laughs> to make sure. Uh, do not recommend when making the initial um, guiding cuts. Do not put your hand <laughs> Uh, over the knife and try and cut anywhere close to it. I had the very, the thickest part of the cutting knife, the cutting edge on my thumb to keep it guiding. Um, I was trying to avoid my thumb actually getting cut because, you know, at the very edge of the plastic and acrylic, it, uh, the knife kind of shoots down immediately because of the force you're applying onto there. Unless you're very, very, very accurate, um, it'll kind of cut down immediately. Didn't want that to go into my thumb uh, because that would have probably been at least a Band-Aid, maybe even a doctor's visit. But uh, yeah, don't recommend that. Uh, again, stay safe out there. Make sure you're using protective equipment. Um, definitely did not do it the proper and safe way, 100%. But then at this point, I'm just making more guiding cuts to ensure that, uh, that I'm able to uh, cut into the plexiglass slash acrylic a little bit easier later on. Um, in a second, you guys will see that I'm using a larger utility knife. Um, and they are also very cheap. You can get them anywhere. You know, Staples, Walmart is, I think, where I got mine, something like that. Um, and we're moving on into, yeah, the actual utility knife. You guys see it there. It's just a red one. Um, don't even know where it's from. Um, someone else gave that to me, <laughs> so I've just been using it for a while. But it does have a, a thicker blade. So I'm still using just the tip of it to cut through. And it does cut through the entire, you know, I think it's 0 0.04 millimeter um, plexiglass that does cut through it entirely. I was going to use scissors, but scissors aren't really accurate enough for it. Um, but this is, or a, a guillotine uh, cutter or a straight line cutter, those are all way more accurate and just as thick, if not thicker than that, than that utility knife. Um, but doing that will actually give a pretty clean cut. Um, I was really surprised. I haven't done this in a while and I was really surprised that this utility knife was able to get such an accurate cut. Um, the only thing that didn't cut very well was, like I said, the scissors. Um, gave it kind of a gross uh, kind of edge, a rough edge that I'll have to eventually, you know, take off. But the utility knife itself gave a very, very clean cut and I'm extremely impressed. Um, it does feel a little sharp, um, so be careful you guys end up picking up one of these later on, but otherwise it feels really nice. I'm, I'm very impressed and if I can, you know, make it so that it's sealed off a little bit more, maybe rounded. I will, of course, do that. We'll, we'll eventually get some kind of rounder for this. Um, but yeah, I was making sure that it all lined up again with everything. And then you can see there 
that the plexiglass covers perfectly and yeah that it uh it all fits together it looks super nice and it's very durable still again even though it's really thin extremely durable but you can still flex it a little bit um, i'm going to use elect to use glue for this you don't have to use any kind of glue or anything um, with actual either paper or maybe heavier plastic that i engrave anything like that i will probably use something like super glue or wood glue you don't really need to use a lot of it because a little bit goes a long way but you can use like a basic elmer's glue glue stick anything like that's what i use later on um, to actually put everything together and again a little bit goes a long way but something like super glue I mean you may only need like a dab of it you know you don't really need any more than that um, otherwise it'll just be too much it'll be a little bit too messy you'll have to clean the rest of it off but you can see I literally just put the glue on the back of the paper and then stick it on the plexiglass you gotta roll it if you have a roller um, get a professional one, a paint roller, anything like that. That'll work too. We use it all the time in, in graphic design, visual design, anything like that, where you're physically cutting things. You do need those because it is just so important to make sure everything is flat and that there are no air bubbles. Those air bubbles are the death of me. I hate them so much. Um, you will need to make sure that those are taken care of. Otherwise, it'll really ruin. It could ruin the QR code. It'll definitely ruin the look of the entire thing. Um, but once I have that on, I mean, that's pretty much it. I used the glue stick this time as a fake rolling pin. I have a real one. Couldn't locate it for the video. Wouldn't even be effective, really effective at all on carpet anyway. Again, make sure you're using a hard surface when doing this. Um, but honestly, I really like the way this turned out. I mean, you guys can see it from the finished product. You guys will see in the, the demonstration in just a second that this looks incredible. I mean, it works perfectly even through the holographic sticker paper. You can use any kind of, you know, holographic sticker foils that you want and it will turn out just fine. It works perfectly for my phone. You know, I'm going to show people this if they want to you know, check out Ozone TCGs channel and then yeah go from there and they can visit everything from there it's really really cool and it's an easy qr code i'm going to use this a lot i really like the idea of this later i'm going to put an nfc chip in these field centers in official you know teams field centers that we're all going to use at events and i'm probably going to use them uh, maybe elsewhere if there's some kind of demand for it so keep on the lookout for that um yeah so we're going to use that just again to promote the, the channel further because we really want to make sure we're getting this the information out there because this is really nice nice Yu-Gi-Oh information um we really like interacting with you guys as well um I'm wondering what you guys think about these uh, this field center idea i think this is a really cool thing i've never seen someone do this online before i happen to know how to use these because i've used them <laughs> when i was in university courses before uh, but yeah, so this is uh, this is was a really cool experience. I'm excited to bring more kind of artsy videos to the scene. Um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Again, I always love reading your guys' comments. They're they're funny sometimes. Um, quite more often than not, they're funny. Um, what you guys say, crazy things. Uh, but yeah, uh, I guess I, this is Eric with those on TCG. I'll see you guys in the next one.